moments of your evening to join us as we worship. And um, it's our prayer that the Holy Spirit would just meet you right where you're at. You know, the Lord sees you. He knows you by name. And uh, he's with you right now. So I pray that you just quiet your heart and, um, and just feel, feel the Lord's presence with you right now.
God. Lord, we know that we're not we're not enough, Lord God. But we need you, God. We need you for our everyday lives, Lord. For everything that we're going through, Lord God. We can't do it without you, Lord. So won't you just come, Lord God? our hearts, Lord God. I pray that we can empty our hearts of anything that's not of you, Lord. To make room for you, Lord God. So that that is the cry of our hearts, Lord. We're not enough. And we just want you, Lord, to come have your way in us, Lord God. We just ask that you come, Lord God. Fill our hearts, Lord God. Fill this place, Lord. Fill our families, Lord God. Fill our church. Your Holy Spirit, Lord. We ask all these things in your name, Lord God. Amen. Well, good evening, Calvary family. Welcome to uh, Friday night. We're glad you're here with us. Uh, hopefully you were able to join us Wednesday night for uh, the Bible study through the book of Mark with Pastor Yvonne. I really enjoyed that. And uh, we'll just continue to do that. Uh, hopefully you'll be with us on Sunday at 9 or 11 or 9 and 11. Uh, keep on coming. I mean, come, you can come to one and watch the other one online. Stay for both. It's, you know, we're happy to have you. Um, but, you know, we're trusting God for good things. Uh, we're going to start talking a little bit about the mission of the church uh, and uh, as we move forward in this. And so um, that's what we're talking about on Sunday. But tonight... I want to talk about something else. I want to give us a, a nice word of encouragement, I believe, is what we're going to have um, this evening. And I say that, I believe that's what we're going to have, because sometimes uh, these things take a turn on me that I don't anticipate. But uh, tonight, I want to encourage you. Um, there are really two kinds of people when it comes to food. There are those that believe the expiration date is the day the food actually expires, and then there are those that believe the expiration date is merely a suggestion. Um, I am not necessarily a expiration date kind of person. Um, my dear sweet wife will throw away medication that has gone past its expiration date uh, and other things that have gone past their expiration date. I'm not sure which one of us is right and if it might not be a right or wrong thing, um, but I'm not sure where you're at. Um, are you an expiration date? kind of person or are you a hey as long as it doesn't smell funky it's probably okay to eat kind of person medicine i think i understand with medicine why you would throw that away past the expiration date um but some things you know i mean like neosporin does neosporin really expire i don't i don't know um <laughs> I'm, I'm a doctor but not that kind and so uh, i can't really challenge the legitimacy of throwing things away like that but like if the milk is clumpy throw it away if it tastes uh, funny, throw it away. Um, actually, you want to hear you want to hear a story that's kind of gross. You probably don't, but that's okay. Um, in May, for our online uh, service that we took the first Sunday of May, uh, I did communion. I used cold coffee because um, the orange, the, the grape juice that we had here at the church had gone bad, and it was like um, stringy. Like I've never seen liquid do this, uh, and so I poured it out, but it came out. It was gross. Um, and so anyways, I don't want to, we didn't use it. So, um, so expiration dates, you know, they're kind of there, kind of not there. Um, I don't know where you're at on that. Sometimes we, uh, we think a, a thing really does expire. And when we, when we walk in those philosophies and those thoughts with food, it's different, but it's kind of like, um, when you're dealing with kids, when they come in, they take off their coat, they take off their shoes, and they just leave them right where they're at. And you're like, hey, I asked you to do that. I asked you to put those away. And they're like, no, you didn't. You're like, yeah, I did that yesterday. Oh, that's still applied to today? <laughs> you still want me to, yeah, you want me to do, oh, you want me to do that every day? You want me to put away my clothes every day? Oh my goodness, I didn't realize. Then they thought they thought like the thing that we asked them to do expired. Like it, it didn't matter anymore. Um, and so a lot of people struggle with uh, holding on to stuff for a long time. And normally when we talk about that in the context of holding on to stuff, we, we talk about um, 
that in a negative sense, right? So you don't want to hold on to anger. You don't want to hold on to bitterness. You don't want to hold on to hate, uh, envy. All of those things will eat you up. Jealousy, those will all eat you up on the inside. But there is an element in the Christian life that requires us to hold on to stuff. Because not everything that God has guaranteed, not everything that God has promised us, promised us, not everything that God has said will happen, has happened. Sometimes it requires us to wait. It requires us to mature and grow. And it's a test of our faith. I don't know if you've ever walked through one of those times where you know for sure that God has told you something. And you're in that mode where you're like, hey, hey God, I, I really need to see this thing. I need to see this commitment come through. You know, and we've, we've spent the last couple of months, we've spent, um, we spent like nine Sundays, 10 Sundays, talking about the promises of God. Nine or seven, I think 10, I think we did 10. Promises of God. And um, we have to keep in mind something about the promises of God. And this is my, my encouraging word for us tonight is that those promises of God don't expire. They, they don't go bad. Um, they, they, don't, they, they don't curdle like milk. And, and, and in, in 2 Corinthians chapter 1, here's what Paul says that I think we, we need to hold on to this verse um, as a good reminder. For no matter how many, it's in verse 20, it says, uh, for no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. I know that those that have served Jesus for a long time have held on to promises. I, I think of... Uh, I think of praying parents whose children have walked away from Jesus and years have passed and nothing's changed. I think of those that have uh, had prophetic words spoken over the church even, over Calvary Lighthouse or your own life, and it hasn't happened. I think of the promises that come in the Word of God where where it's, uh, he talks about caring for us and taking care of us, but our life has continued to be hard or difficult or the things that we're praying for haven't come to pass. And, and we feel as though the Holy Spirit has revealed to us that it's going to happen. I want to give you just an encouragement today that if God has made a promise, it's yes and amen. It's yes and amen. That means that it's it's... It's, it's going to happen. Now, we might not necessarily recognize it when it first happens because our idea of what God was going to do might be different than what God actually does. But if God has made a promise to you, it's yes and amen. The, the promises of the Old Testament, the promises of the New Testament, the promises that we see in God's word, they didn't expire at the end of the book of Revelation. The promises about caring and loving for his people and the protection for his people and building his church and giving us power and authority through the Holy Spirit, that didn't end. It never stopped. It never ran out. There's no expiration date on the promises of God. And I, I, I really felt like that was a, a word for tonight um, because, you know, the, the, the coronavirus, the COVID-19, we, we looked, and New Jersey's doing really well, but around the country, it's like it's coming back up. And I think we can get into this phase where we're like, hey, wait a minute, I thought we were done with this thing. And we get frustrated. But you know, the promises, you know, Psalm 91 that we were holding on to at the very beginning of this, the, the perseverance, the endurance that we start out with after time goes on we all of a sudden we feel overwhelmed 
You know, I, I was I was talking this week online with a, a number of pastors because um, this has been hard in a lot of venues. This has been a hard, hard in a lot of ministry opportunities, but it's also been hard, you know, on, in, in your own place. I'm sure you recognize that. Um, and so I just I just asked a question of pastors online. I'm like, how are you guys doing? Because this has been different. This has been challenging. And um, some some guys are doing great. I, I feel like we as a church have done really well. I'm really proud of us as a church. I think we've done a good job of being encouraging and supporting. And I think uh, those are fantastic things. Um, and so I, I feel really encouraged. But it's still, it's been very draining in these times. Um, but some pastors, they're, they're ready to quit. Um because their churches haven't been encouraging. Their churches haven't been life-giving. Um, and what I worry about is that there's a crash coming in the lives of many pastors because they're wore out. You might have that same feeling. I thought we were done with this. I thought this was over. I thought we were going to move past this. We will. We will. And even if we don't move past it quickly, all of the promises of God that we spoke about for two months, they're still true. The protection, the healing, the blessings, the commitments he's made to you, the commitment he's made to his body, the commitment he's made to his church, they're yes and amen. And it's hard but we can endure because we're doing it together. But also because we know our God is faithful. Our God will sustain us. And so here's what I want you to do tonight. Um, I want you to find three or four promises that we've talked about. Because we've talked about a lot of promises over the last um, four months. But also, maybe you have something in your life that you're holding on to as a promise of God. I want you to write that down. And I want you to write First Corinthians, or 2 Corinthians 1.20 under it. For no matter how many promises God has made, they are yes in Christ. And so through him, the amen is spoken by us to the glory of God. Just write this. Every time you need a reminder. And it's, it's a, it's, it is an activity that I want to engage you in so that it engages your mind and your spirit. God's promises are yes and amen. Be encouraged. We don't have to be overwhelmed and discouraged even though things are prolonged and going on and on. We can be encouraged because God's promises are yes and amen. Hold on to that and trust that he will carry you through. Father, right now I pray that your hand of blessing will be so evident in the lives of your people that those of us that are struggling with promises and perseverance, that we would lean into your promises are yes and amen. And that we would be restored and revived by your presence and your calling. I pray right now, Jesus, that you would lift us up, carry us through, sustain us, help us to thrive. We don't want to just survive. We want to thrive in your glory and in your kingdom. Be with us today. It's in the precious name of Jesus we pray. Amen and amen. God is with you. His promises are yes and amen. You do not have to be worried because he will follow through. God bless you. Have a great night. Have a great Saturday tomorrow. And uh, we'll see you Sunday at 9 and 11, either in person or online. God bless. Have a great day.